OK, so let's say we want to find the coordinates of the non-stationary points of inflection of y equals x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x minus 2. OK, so the first thing that we want to do is to find the first derivative dy by dx. So that's 3x squared plus 10x minus 7. OK, so that's our first derivative. Now, you could go straight on and find the second derivative, OK, but... Uh, I'm going to find the um, stationary points of this curve first. Uh, and the reason why I would do that is that I want to make double check that any non-stationary points of reflection that seem to be identified aren't stationary points themselves. Okay? I do need to check that that is not the case. So if I put this equal to 0, the 3x squared plus 10x minus 7, OK, so I'm going to try that on my calculator. Um, so we've got 3, 10, uh, minus 7. And we get x is minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 46 over 3. OK, so the stationary points exist at those two points. Right, now go on to the second derivative, d2y by dx squared. So that'd be 6x plus 10. So non-stationary points of inflection exist when the second derivative is 0. So 6x plus 10 is 0. So that means that x would be minus 10 over 6. OK, so minus 10 over 6 or minus 5 thirds. OK, so we know that x equals minus 5 thirds is not a stationary point. It is not one of those points there. OK, so that does mean that um, the minus 5 thirds should be the only possible point of inflection. OK, however, you do need to also check that the second derivative changes sign either side of that station of that point of inflection. OK, so we need to make sure that it goes from concave to convex. Now, because this is a cubic, it kind of has to, OK? But in general, for general equations of general curves, this check would need to be made. So we've got minus 5 thirds, OK? So if we chose, uh, let's say, minus 2 and minus 1, so points either side of the point of inflection, OK, um, so, dun, 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 dun. well, let's go with, because that's minus 1.6 for Let's go with uh, something a little bit closer to home. So let's go with minus uh, 1.7 and minus 1.6, OK? Um, now, the points that you choose, you don't want to substitute in points that are too far away, because if your curve looks something like this, for example, and you're checking this point here, OK, where it's going from convex to concave. You don't want to like pick a random point over here where it's, where it's concave and a point here where it's concave, OK, because um, otherwise you'll get the wrong impression of what's going on. So you don't want to choose like points randomly either side. You want to keep them relatively close. OK, so um, substituting these into the second derivative. So we've got six lots of minus 1.7 plus 10, and that gets us minus 1 fifth. OK, so that's negative. And if I substitute minus 1.6, we get 2 fifths, which is positive. And because you've got this change of sign, you're going from... Uh, less than zero, so concave, to greater than zero, convex. So concave to convex. So we've definitely got a non-stationary point of inflection. So non-stationary point of inflection at, well, we've got the x 
coordinate, and now I just need to find the y coordinate. So substituting minus 5 thirds into this, we get minus 5 thirds cubed plus 5 lots of minus 5 thirds squared. Take away 7 lots of minus 5 thirds, take away 2, and that's 511 over 27. Okay? And so that is definitely a non-stationary point of inflection for that curve.